Hello. This story is part of a series titled Memories of Tehran. I believe people come into our lives for a reason, to help us on our journey. My fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Jane Filstrup, was one of those people for me. It had to do with a conversation about karma, which I will share in an upcoming story. In the meantime, envision a 10-year-old boy who is walking the fine line between two worlds. On one hand, an outside world that promises the possibility of a dream, and on the other, a home life whose foundation is plagued with riddles from the past. Welcome to Storytime with Kumars. My name is Keo Jujina. This is my story titled, The Poof Hack Back. I hope you enjoy it. With the autumn of 1970 came my transition from Bedi Gah School to Iran Zamin. There were rumors of why we had to leave Bedi Gah School, which left me with a feeling of unease. I took comfort in knowing a few of my longtime friends had made the transition with me. My fifth grade teacher was Mrs. Jane Filstrip. There was something about the way she dressed suggested an alternative lifestyle, not bound by convention. She was soft-spoken, but assertive when she needed to be to get through to some of the students. Over the course of the school year, not only would she reveal her love of culture, but her teaching methods would touch me in a deep and personal way. On occasion, we would go on field trips in and around Tehran. Going on a field trip involved having a permission slip signed and a small donation towards bus fare usually between 20 to 50 reals, the equivalent of two to five dollars. There was a tire factory where bias ply tires were made. Good year, I think it was. At the end of our tour, the general manager thanked each one of us for coming and gifted us with a Goodyear tire ashtray. Another visit included a dairy farm where they processed milk that came from cows. In our home, Milk came from cans with the logo KLIM printed across the side. At the end of the tour, we stopped at a pen where a great white bull was kept. The foreman tickled its nose and the bull sneezed. Those who squeezed their way to the front row for a better look got the worst of the nose sauce that came flying out. I was glad I wasn't one of them. I have a memory of sitting in a small, comfortable space crammed tight with students all around me as Mrs. Filstrip first shared her vision for making hand puppets and described how it all came together. We would use ping pong balls over a round tube for the head with strips of local Kehan newspaper soaked in paper mache. It was my first time with paper mache and what a mess that must have been. At home, mom helped me with a costume, making sure it fit over my large hands like a loose fitting glove. As our puppet construction progressed, it was time to pick out a design for the theater and raise money for the build through the sale of homemade goods. The concept of a bake sale was foreign to me, but what better way to practice our arithmetic and an understanding of money and how to earn it. On bake sale day, a table was cleared and transformed into a staging area. Small booths were strategically placed in busy hallways where students would pass, hoping to tempt a passerby with a sweet or morsel to eat. Everyone had their assignments and knew what to do. On the first bake sale day, mom sent me to the Shirini shop or sweet bakery. With change, she pulled from a Toby jug kept high on a shelf. It was money Dad had budgeted for groceries and other small things. I picked out a variety of thinly sliced cakes topped with a layer of gelatin and a piece of fruit. They were easy to eat and no one could resist the temptation of a single slice. What cost five reals we sold for 20. And all the money went to pay for the wood needed to build the portable puppet stage. The next bake sale day, mom was less than eager about doling out money for sweets and field trips. 
and had a lot to say about Mrs. Philstrip and her teaching methods. Sometimes when mom got stressed, she would turn to belittling and name calling. I pleaded with her to understand. This was fun for me and for once, I was actually learning something in a way that made sense to me. My worst fear was I didn't want to be the only kid who did not participate. As it turns out, there was at least one other, a classmate who lived a few streets away. After our conversation, mom walked over to the makeshift closet, the one in our bedroom, where a curtain had been strung across part of the room to store dad stuff. She pulled out a package of Pufak, or Cheetos. They came in only one size, large. If I wanted to contribute something, this was it. I could take it or leave it. Faced with an overwhelming number of choices, I went with it. The next day, I arrived at school embarrassed. I hid the Pufak bag under the lip of my jacket before walking into class. When no one was watching, I placed it on the table with the other neatly arranged boxes and clear glass dishes, hoping it might blend into the background of invisibility. Instead, the large family-sized bag of Pufak sat on the table like the Eiffel Tower, beckoning everyone to look at its brightly colored packaging and odd shape all through the morning session of class. How I wish for someone, a Pufak aficionado, to abscond with the bag so I could get it out of my sight. But no one came forward during my time of need. After lunch, when all the festivities associated with the bake sale were over, and it was time to return to the afternoon of learning, the bag sat on the table like the Buddha awaiting contemplation. Mrs. Philstrip asked who had brought the bag of Pufak. I wasn't about to raise my hand. Instead, a classmate ratted me out and I was asked to explain. Normally, I would have rehearsed my lines in advance, but I had not expected to be placed on stage. My mind raced to come up with a plausible story, like I had been trained to do. Perhaps I could say, owners of the Shirini shop were away on vacation in Shiraz, and it was closed, or the shop ran out of flour. That's when the voice of reason appeared. And it asked if I wanted to break old patterns that were not really working for me. Perhaps it was time to turn over a new leaf. I thought if I could speak the truth and leave out some of the details, like the name calling, which was best shared with close friends and confidants, I might stand a chance. Mom doesn't believe in your way of teaching, I heard myself blurt out before realizing what I had done. She called having bake sales and making puppets ridiculous, a waste of time and money. She was not going to deal with it anymore. I watched as Mrs. Philstrip studied me closely. My response might have caught her by surprise. Unknown to me, a weight had been taken off my shoulders, a feeling of freedom for the first time, I had said something and did not exhaust myself searching for a story or sharing one which had been prescribed for me. Is your mother coming to the parent-teachers conference? Asked Mrs. Philstrip in an unfittingly calm tone. Mom and Dad did not always show up to those things. I'm not sure. I think she is, I said. Good. Can you tell her I would like to speak to her?